The Mars Climate Orbiter was a 338-kilogram robotic space probe launched by NASA on December 11, 1998 to study the Martian climate, Martian atmosphere, and surface changes and to act as the communications relay in the Mars Surveyor 98 program for Mars Polar Lander. However, on September 23, 1999, communication with the spacecraft was lost as the spacecraft went into orbital insertion, due to ground-based computer software which produced output in non-SI units of pound-seconds instead of the metric units of newton-seconds, specified in the contract between NASA and Lockheed. The spacecraft encountered Mars on a trajectory that brought it too close to the planet causing it to pass through the upper atmosphere and disintegrate. Mission Background History after the loss of Mars Observer and the onset of the rising costs associated with the future International Space Station, NASA began seeking less expensive, smaller probes for scientific interplanetary missions. In 1994, the Panel on Small Spacecraft Technology was established to set guidelines for future miniature spacecraft. The panel determined that the new line of miniature spacecraft should be under 1,000 kg with highly focused instrumentation. In 1995, a new Mars Surveyor program began as a set of missions designed with limited objectives, low costs, and frequent launches. The first mission in the new program was Mars Global Surveyor, launched in 1996 to map Mars and provide geologic data using instruments intended for Mars Observer. Following Mars Global Surveyor, Mars Climate Orbiter carried two instruments, one originally intended for Mars Observer, to study the climate and weather of Mars. The primary science objectives of the mission included determine the distribution of water on Mars, monitor the daily weather and atmospheric conditions, record changes on the Martian surface due to wind and other atmospheric effects, determine temperature profiles of the atmosphere, monitor the water vapor and dust content of the atmosphere, look for evidence of past climate change. Spacecraft design The Mars Climate Orbiter bus measured 2.1 meters tall, 1.6 meters wide and 2 meters deep. The internal structure was largely constructed with graphite composite, aluminum honeycomb supports, a design found in many commercial airplanes. With the exception of the scientific instruments, battery and main engine, the spacecraft included dual redundancy on the most important systems. The spacecraft was three-axis stabilized and included eight hydrazine monopropellant thrusters. Orientation of the spacecraft was determined by a star tracker, two sun sensors, and two inertial measurement units. Orientation was controlled by firing the thrusters or using three reaction wheels. To perform the Mars orbital insertion maneuver, the spacecraft also included a Leros 1B main engine rocket providing 640N of thrust by burning hydrazine fuel with nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. The spacecraft included a 1.3 METER high-gain antenna to transceiver data with the deep space network over the X-band. The radio transponder designed for the Cassini Wegens mission was used as a cost-saving measure. It also included a two-way UHF radio frequency system to relay communications with Mars Polar Lander upon an expected landing on December 3, 1999. The space probe was powered with a three-panel solar array, providing an average of 500W at Mars. Deployed, the solar array measured 5.5 meters in length. Power was stored in 12th cell, 16 amp hour nickel hydrogen batteries. The batteries were intended to be recharged when the solar array received sunlight and powered the spacecraft as it passed into the shadow of Mars. When entering into orbit around Mars, the solar array was to be utilized in the aerobraking maneuver to slow the spacecraft until her circular orbit was achieved. In an effort to simplify previous implementations of computers on spacecraft, 
Mars Climate Orbiter featured a single computer using an IBM RAD6000 processor capable of 5 MHz, 10 MHz and 20 MHz operations. Data storage was to be maintained on 128 MB of random access memory and 18 MB of flat memory. The flat memory was intended to be used for highly important data, including triplicate copies of the flight system software. The cost of the mission was $327.6 million total for the orbiter and lander, comprising $193.1 million for spacecraft development. $91.7 million for launching it, and $42.8 million for mission operations. Scientific Instruments Mission Profile Launch and Trajectory The Mars Climate Orbiter Probe was launched on December 11, 1998 at 18 hours 45 minutes and 51 seconds UTC by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration from Space Launch Complex 17A at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, aboard a Delta II 7425 launch vehicle. The complete burn sequence lasted 42 minutes bringing the spacecraft into a home and transfer orbit with a final velocity of 5.5 km per second relative to Mars, and sending the probe into a 669 million km trajectory. At launch, Mars Climate Orbiter weighed 638 kg including propellant. Exploded Diagram of Delta II Launch Vehicle with Mars Climate Orbiter Launch of Mars Climate Orbiter by NASA on a Delta II 7425 launch vehicle Interplanetary Trajectory of Mars Climate Orbiter Aerobraking Procedure to Place Mars Climate Orbiter into Orbit Around Mars Encounter with Mars This image of Mars on September 7, 1999 is the only image acquired by the orbiter. Diagram comparing the intended and actual trajectories of the orbiter. Mars Climate Orbiter began the planned orbital insertion maneuver on September 23, 1999 at 9 hours 0 minutes and 46 seconds UTC. Mars Climate Orbiter went out of radio contact when the spacecraft passed behind Mars at 9 hours 4 minutes and 52 seconds UTC, 49 seconds earlier than expected and communication was never re-established. Due to complications arising from human error, the spacecraft encountered Mars at a lower than anticipated altitude and disintegrated due to atmospheric stresses. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has since completed most of the intended objectives for this mission. Cause of failure On November 10, 1999, the Mars Climate Orbiter Mishap Investigation Board released a Phase 1 report detailing the suspected issues encountered with the loss of the spacecraft. Previously, on September 8, 1999, trajectory correction maneuver 4 was computed and then executed on September 15, 1999. It was intended to place the spacecraft at an optimal position for an orbital insertion maneuver that would bring the spacecraft around Mars at an altitude of 226 km on September 23, 1999. However, during the week between TCM-4 and the orbital insertion maneuver, the navigation team indicated the altitude may be much lower than intended at 150 to 170 kilometers, 24 hours prior to orbital insertion. Calculations placed the orbiter at an altitude of 110 km, 80 km is the minimum altitude that Mars Climate Orbiter was thought to be capable of surviving during this maneuver. Post-failure calculations showed that the spacecraft was on a trajectory that would have taken the orbiter within 57 km of the surface, where the spacecraft likely disintegrated because of atmospheric stresses. The primary cause of this discrepancy was that one piece of ground software supplied by Lockheed Martin produced results in a United States customary unit. Contrary to its software interface specification, while a second system, supplied by NASA, that used those results expected them to be in metric units, in accord with the CIS. 
software that calculated the total impulse produced by thruster firings calculated results in pound seconds. The trajectory calculation used these results to correct the predicted position of the spacecraft for the effects of thruster firings. This software expected its inputs to be in newton seconds. The discrepancy between calculated and measured position, resulting in the discrepancy between desired and actual orbit insertion altitude, had been noticed earlier by at least two navigators, whose concerns were dismissed. A meeting of trajectory software engineers, trajectory software operators, propulsion engineers, and managers was convened to consider the possibility of executing trajectory correction maneuver 5, which was in the schedule. Attendees of the meeting recall an agreement to conduct TCM 5, but it was ultimately not done.